They are getting into the zone today with football. The reggae boys will attempt to continue flying the Caribbean flag high in the 2023 edition of the CONCACAF Gold Cup as they stride into the Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas to take on L3 tonight. The team with the most trophies under their belt, Mexico. Reggae Boys head coach Hemerg Halgrimson was reluctant to divulge his plan, obviously, for the game. You, you actually want me to answer that question? <laughs> How are you going to play them tomorrow? <laughs> no, let, let, me just, let me just say that we know the strings. We, we've gone over the strings. So powerful team, like you said high pressing, a lot of energy on the ball, a lot of uh, like off the ball runs, third man running into spaces. So we need to be really careful when playing them. So uh, like I said, after the Guatemala game, they are kind of the same version of football style, but they have, of course, better players playing at a higher level. So it's going to be a tougher game with, with higher pace than, than against Guatemala and, and with We've gone over how, how we want to approach this game. We will do it again tonight on the last last meeting. So, yeah, but how are we going to do it? You're not going to get that answer from me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the Jamaica goalkeeper and captain Andre Blake and coach Hargrimson both sharing the sentiments that they expect a familiar Mexican team. For me, every Mexican team is the same. You know, they're always very organized. Very tough to play against, you know, very tactical. As coach said, third man runs, you know. Um, so we know that once we're playing Mexico, it's always going to be a tough game and one that we always have to make sure we're up for the task. Yeah, I, I, like I said before, and, and I agree with, with Andre, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a few players' changes, not many, from, from the game in Azteca. Uh, I, th I think if I remember right, maybe three or four maximum. So it's similar players, uh, similar formation, uh, and I think more or less similar style. I think uh, Jami is is, uh, is a little bit more direct than the the coaches before. So a little bit more direct than, than them. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's the same players with the same quality. So, yeah, very similar, I would say. OK, and joining us to preview this clash is former Trinidad and Tobago defender and uh, football analyst Brent Sancho, who did play in the CONCACAF Gold Cup in his playing, playing years. Um, Brent, a big match tonight based on the form of this Jamaican team. I don't think anyone would be shocked if they beat Mexico. But as usual, as CONCACAF giants, Mexico have to be respected. Yeah, certainly they have to be respected. Uh, certainly a massive game for both teams. Uh, it's a very difficult one to call. Uh, of course, Jamaica has uh, had a very good tournament so far. Uh, but I think a lot in the camp, uh, and maybe back in Jamaica and in the Caribbean, would be disappointed if they didn't go all the way. Uh, that being said, as you as you rightfully said, Mexico is not to be discounted. And, and not just not to be dis discredited or discounted, the fact that this is a Mexican team that is now starting to show signs of Mexico of old. Uh, and I think that is something that we have to be wary of uh, as, from a Jamaica perspective. And that's the thing, right? They, they do know each other very well, the, the Mexican team. Um, and I reckon that they will not be as naive as, say, Guatemalans who decided to go uh, for the shootout with Jamaica in the previous game. But if this turns out to be a shootout, who do you expect to get out on top? The Mexicans, they, they, they're, they're extremely good in transition. They, they, they send a lot of runners forward. Their ball movement and ball speed is very good. Tempo of the game is good. Uh, and they're the team that have increased their, uh, their offensive side of it. Uh, you know, the, coming into this tournament, uh, not, a, not many gave them a chance, particularly in view of their poor performance against the U.S. in the Nations League finals not too long ago. But fast forward to where we are now. It's a new coach, uh, a new belief within the team. As I said, a Mexico of old, they certainly look that way. And they certainly look very capable uh, of going all that, all the way. Uh, for Jamaica, they have to be very included. It's very interesting listening to the press conference with the coach and, and of course, goalkeeper Blake. Uh, yes, they're wary of what Mexico can do. Uh, and they're, of course, talking about Mexico is Mexico. That is true. But you also have to take into consideration this is a rejuvenated Mexican team that seemingly believes that they have to win this Gold Cup 
to appease a lot of the poor performances we have seen from, from them over the last couple of months and maybe a year or so. But, but based on what we heard from Coach Halgrims in the press conference, you get the feeling that there may be tweaks to um, what they may do as far as the game plan is concerned. Mm -hmm. Do you expect the Jamaicans to be a little bit more compact tonight? Yeah, I think especially in the middle of the park, I think that's the one area that uh, anyone that's watched Jamaica would think that that's uh, an area for a little bit of concern. They've looked a bit open, particularly in the Guatemala game. I was a bit surprised to see how open they were in the middle of the park. They certainly cannot play that way against the Mexican. Uh, but how do you tweak? Do you move uh, 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 Bobby Reed out in the middle of the park and uh, move him from the number 10 and play more solid at Johnson in there with Lambert, etc.? I'm not sure how you move it because <clears throat> that would take away from everything that's made Jamaica good so far in this tournament, which is the offensive threat and uh, capabilities going forward. So yes, we talk about possible adjustments, but you don't want to make the sort of adjustments that impact your team in such a way that you don't do what you are good at, and that is offensively extremely strong. Right, and Brent, you speak about making those changes and instantly my mind goes to Manchester City and Pep Guardiola, you know. it's You have to continue doing what you've been doing throughout the season. You know, yeah. I don't expect coach to make any massive changes. He may make a couple tweaks, but I hope the Jamaica Reggae boys and the coach, you know, continue with what we've been seeing from them. You spoke about the offensive um, advantage and I think it's are very important that we mentioned they have nine different goal scorers in this competition so yeah. far and i think that's an asset for the jamaican team what say you based on the fact that you know goals are coming from different areas of the park you know no, that's excellent I, I think any team would want that would want to have supply lines uh, of goal scoring coming from all over the park uh, they've looked very good offensively they've got the wing backs uh, mountain forward of course midfield running beyond the lines it's been very good for Jamaica offensively, and, and, and that's not the complaint. I think the real question, Mariah, is how, did you, how does Jamaica cope with the Mexican press? I think that is the number one factor for me. I've said this from the beginning uh, when we talked about how would Jamaica play. They were very direct in the U.S. game in the first couple of minutes. It must be noted they've started every game in the Gold Cup very, very well, and they have to do so again against the Mexican, but they've been direct. The question is, you can't be direct for 90 minutes. You have to mix things up. And that's what made Jamaica so good throughout this tournament. At some point, they're going to have to play through the Mexican press. Can they do it? And the game, I believe, will hinge on whether or not the, the, the Jamaicans can play through that Mexican press and get the ball up to the front three with time and space to take on players in 1v1 situations. And Brent, you're asking the question, and I'm going to pose your question to you. Do you think the Jamaican team that we're seeing throughout this CONCACAF Gold Cup tournament has what it takes to do that? Oh, absolutely. No doubt. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. Actually, I sit here, and as much as I've uh, suggested that Mexico, well, I did say Mexico would win the tournament, I am still not sure how the result will go tonight. It is very, very tight. There are so many moving parts that's going to take place in the game. Uh, various uh, 1v1 battles and situations that need to happen for either team to win. So, as I said, as I sit here, Mexico, yes, is playing a lot better than they played before, but don't discredit or discount the Jamaicans. I think if we were to ask me who were the favorites, it may be Mexico by a, a hairline, but it's a close encounter that can go anyway. The fact is, um, head to head yeah. at the Gold Cup, Mexico are without question the more dominant team. We see that uh, the Jamaicans have beaten Mexico, I think, only once in, yeah. in eight meetings in the um, CONCACAF Gold Cup. So the track record and history suggests that the Mexicans have had the better of the Jamaican team. But are these statistics, Brent, statistics that we should throw through the window because this Jamaica team is probably not like any other Jamaican team that has played in this tournament before? <laughs> I don't think necessarily throw through the window, but I, I don't think it holds a lot uh, of merit with, with the point that you just made. I, I've said this all along that this is arguably the best Jamaican team on paper ever. And uh, at the end of the day, yes, they've got lost uh, to Mexico. Uh, no, sorry, won one game against Mexico. But I think what they present to the Mexicans is a real threat, particularly in the wide areas. That's where Mexico struggles. Sanchez and Gallardo 
the left and right back, they have struggled with pace and guile. And that's exactly what Jamaica has. So if you want to ask me what Jamaica needs to do to win the football game, if they can get the likes of Gray and Bailey facing up those two wing backs in 1v1 situations, I will put my money on Jamaica all day long. However, there is still a lot to play for throughout the game. And I think the middle of the park, the midfield battle, is going to be the decider as to who will win or lose this football game. So, yes, I think that it's very, very tight. But you have to look at those uh, little battles within that would decide the overall outcome of the game. Yeah, um, Brent, Rene Simois, who you may know well, had coached Trinidad at Tobago as well, and he took Jamaica to the 1998 World Cup Finals. He's actually in Jamaica at the moment as a part of uh, some festivities in, in, in Manchester, and I heard him on radio today suggesting that this Jamaica team is uh, a better team than the team that he took to the World Cup. You have said over and over on this show that um, this is the best Jamaica team that you have seen based on its, its roster. Um, so I guess Renes Moyes is seeing things the way you have. Yeah, we are. But I, I, I must caution uh, yes. us in the Caribbean here and, and jumping very quickly on the Jamaican bandwagon. It's still a work in progress. And I think that's sometimes mm -hmm. where we do get a bit carried away. I think that the team is slowly gelling. We've seen from the U.S. game to where they are now. It's a team that's slowly coming together. They've just really started to play and find each other's spots and be able to read each other and the chemistry is getting and it's getting better. They will be a better team after this tournament. There's no doubt in my mind. They are favorites to me to do well in the Nations League that start in September. And I'll go even as far as to say I'd be very disappointed if Jamaica doesn't qualify for the U.S. World Cup. However, where we sit right now, it's a team that is still building. They still have the, the chinks and armors to work out. If they lose to Mexico tonight, it's not the end of the world. It would be a disappointing result. However, we have to understand where they are. It's a team, as I said, just come together. Damani Gray, what is this? is fourth cap uh, or fifth cap for Jamaica. So it's still coming together for them. Yes, it's great on paper, but paper doesn't win you, uh, doesn't win you titles. It doesn't get you to a World Cup. You have to gel. You have to come together. And that is what is happening with this Jamaican team. Yeah, great point there, Brent. Thanks for linking with us here on the Sports Night Zone. And comments today by Rene Simois, Donald. Um, you were a, a part of the... Of, of the spectator group watching the Jamaica qualify for the 1998 World Cup. Your thoughts on Rene Simois comparing this team to the one he took to the World Cup. The point Brent just made is a good one because this team is still building. To Rene Simois' team's credit, he built that team and they were continuously for years developing chemistry and gelling. So that is the strength that that 1998 team would have had over the, this team as it currently is. Yeah, because they would have been together for years, right? That's, right. that's the point. Um, that's right. But I think he was talking in terms of talent and, and, and yeah. what we have now, the fact that we have a, a, a pretty fantastic trio yeah. and Bob Reed behind them, yeah. um, it kind of leans towards the way of talent. Mm -hmm. um, but, but certainly as a group, uh, it was prime soil that they were in, in terms of being together for such a long time. The core of that team, that squad based in Jamaica, and you know, just the added spice of the overseas players uh, made uh, them go over the line as far as qualification to France 98 was concerned. Yeah, that's our segment. Back with more on the Sports Mat Zone after this. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment.